Hello, I'm Petra Lewis. I am Professor of Radiology and OBGYN at the Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center and Geisel School of Medicine at Dartmouth. I'm also a breast imager. And this movie is going to go through my particular screening mammography workflow. Screening mammography is pretty hard to learn how to do um, for radiology residents and also pretty hard to teach um, for radiology attending. So I thought it would be helpful for you to have some kind of an idea of the thought process that we go through um, and one at least one type of standard workflow. This talk really aims to give you a guide to this process, but it's important to know that there's no one system or one workflow that is the right system. This is mine. It's one I've used for over 20 years. Um, but workflows are very individual. They're very customizable. Um, so it's important you develop your own system and you stick to it. And you may need to try out several different people's workflows within your department to see which one you like. Please know that this movie is not really to discuss mammographic abnormalities, but more the, where you should be looking for them. So just to remind you, generally speaking, the mammographic abnormalities that we're looking for on screening mammograms, this is not an all-inclusive list, obviously, are masses, asymmetries and focal asymmetries, architectural distortion, calcifications, lymphadenopathy, and skin thickening. So this is what you're really looking for on mammograms. You're looking for too much white stuff, white stuff that wasn't there before and is there now. This is sugar, by the way. A standard screening mammogram includes right MLO and right CC views, left MLO and left CC views, and then there may be additional views of either breast, such as nipple in profile, extended CCL views or cleavage views in order to be able to obtain the entire breast. Screening mammograms include some combination of 2D images and 3D tomographic images. Those are now widely available at most institutions. And the 2D images may be digital acquired or they may be synthetic. Um, or you may have both. And I'm going to show you a workflow system that has both. Uh, most places are also using some form of computer assisted detection. And you're going to have to have a workflow that includes this. I also want to remind you that screening mammograms can only be categorized as BIRADS 0, 1, or 2. BIRADS codes 3, 4, 5, and 6 should not be used for screening mammography, only for diagnostic. This is an overall view of what my workflow screens are on the um, hologic mammographic unit that we use. I start with both breasts, then I move to the right breast, and then the left breast. And we're going to be going through each of these screens individually. So my first screen is a four over four view where I'm comparing the oldest old of the MLO and the CC to the most current exam. Um, I have stacked under the oldest old um, additional exams I can scroll through if I need to. And this is what I call my fovea view. It's because it sort of miniaturizes the breasts. It actually makes asymmetries and masses really jump out your eye. You're focusing the maximal amount of information on the most sensitive part of your retina. And so just sort of looking at this, maybe I'll look at it and think, mm, you know, that one looks a little bit different from the other side, but kind of doesn't look any different than before. And I just kind of mark mentally abnormalities I'm going to analyze further on. I don't analyze them on this screen. If I have additional views, it's going to show up for me in a little box here. Um, and I can look at call up those if I want to. The way that I ensure that I completely review the mammogram is to use what I call the lawnmower technique. And the next few screens are going to show you how I do that. My next two screens are the bilateral current, see here, current MLO views. And because the workflow at our institution includes both synthetic and true uh, 2D digital images, I like to look at both in different screens. Um, I think sometimes the synthetic um, images show something that the true TD, 2D does not and vice versa. And so these images here, you can see it says C view up here. That's uh, the hologic. Um, trademark for their synthetic 2D mammograms. There are many different ways of reviewing a mammogram. Um, I use what I call the lawnmower pattern. So I start at the top and my eyes scan back and forth in overlapping lines as if you were mowing a lawn. I go down the right MLO, then I go down the left MLO in a similar pattern. And I'm looking for those mammographic abnormalities that we talked about earlier. When I'm doing this, I'm specifically making sure that I'm including those areas where it might be easy to move th miss things, such as the axillae, the nipple area, 
and the inframammary fold. And if I have any question, I'll cast my eye back over those areas. And finally, on this image, I do a three zone comparison. So I look at the top zone on the right. I compare it to the top zone on the left, looking for asymmetry, the middle zone on the right compared to the middle zone on the left, and then finally the bottom zone. If I see any abnormalities during any part of this review, then I may mag up on them or scroll through the Tomo slices in that area, depending on what I'm seeing. The next screen are bilateral current CC views, and I'm going to do exactly the same process. So I'm going to start with my lawnmower type pattern. Then I'm going to check areas of the extremes of the film, so the extreme lateral, the extreme medial and the nipple areas. And then I'm going to compare right to left in thirds again. My next screen is going to show the right MLO and the right CC views in full, highest resolution, and also with the CAD markers on. So most systems are using some form of computer-assisted detection, and they're going to show the count of how many lesions that they've identified on each of the images. You can see on this particular study, they identified uh, one asymmetry. Those are stars on this particular system and one triangle, which are calcifications in this particular system. And so I'm going to interrogate each of those areas that has been identified to see if I believe it's a real abnormality or not. And there's many, many, many false positives of these, unfortunately. So I've magged over those areas of calcifications, and I've decided in this particular case that there's no real underlying calcifications. It was just a false positive. I look at the other areas that were asymmetries and decide that they're not significant. And then I move on with my systematic review. I now focus on the right MLO full magnification view only, and I'm going to pan through it so I can focus on one area at a time. Um, most systems have some form of auto panning. Um, I happen to use a right click, drag, manual panning to look at thirds, but um, you can use whichever system you like. And so while I'm on the top third of the breast, which is my first screen, I'm going to do that same lawnmower type pattern review that we did on the, um, the standard resolution view for the right MLO. I do the same for the middle third. And then I pan down to the lower third and finish my review. And obviously, if there's something we see, such as calcifications in this area, I'm going to mag up on them. Now I turn my attention to the right CC view, and I'm going to repeat exactly the same lawn mowing um, and panning system over the high resolution right CC view. I next start with the right MLO TOMO, and I either I scroll through it. I usually use the manual scroll wheel, but you can certainly use the Cine. And similar to on the other images, I'm going to focus very much on the upper third. Then I'm going to do the middle third. Sometimes if it's a small breast, I do this in halves. And then the bottom third, and I'm going to go through each of the TOMOs, usually two or three times. I'm then going to go over to the right CC TOMO, and I'm going to do exactly the same as I did with the right MLO, just focusing on one third at a time as I scroll back and forth two or three times. My next screen is a comparison, the right MLO from this year with the oldest old on top of the stack I have here, and I'm directly comparing across. And again, I tend to do this in thirds. You can see I'm kind of a thirds gal. If there are additional newer mammograms, I may or may not scroll through the stack and again, just doing a comparison between the two sides. I then move over to the right CC and again, I'm looking at the current year compared to the oldest old that the patient has in this case, 2018. And again, I'm just comparing those zones. And I may call up more recent mammograms and just go through the stack. These comparisons are piled one on top of another, so it's very easy to go through multiple years very fast. Now I've done the right breast. I'm going to do exactly the same process on the left breast. If you feel that you've got it, then feel free to just speed up this section or skip ahead. 
The first screen that comes up for the left breast is going to be the screen that shows the CAD markers. In this case, there's none. If there were some, obviously, I would interrogate them. Then I pan through the full resolution left MLO. And this can be a manual pan, as I said before, or you can use the auto panning function in your um, mammographic workflow system. Same for the full resolution left CC, panning from the top to the bottom. Change to the left MLO Tomo view, and again, just go through back and forth through it several times, focusing on different zones of the breast. You can't look at the whole thing at once. Followed by the left CC Tomo view. Left MO comparisons with the current to the oldest old. Um, as I said before, I like the oldest old on top of the stack, and then you can scroll through the others as necessary. And the same for the left CC, current, oldest old, and newer mammograms if necessary. Okay, so let's review. I've talked about my workflow. I haven't really talked about specifically what I'm looking for on each of the views. So we're just going to go over that a little bit. So we start with that four and four fovea view. And again, this is looking for obvious changes with the oldest old up here on the top. Um, and then the current one at the bottom, I'm looking for uh, particularly masses and asymmetries. I'm going to analyze them later, not on this view. It's also a great place to look at quality control and see if there's an obvious asymmetry between the two breasts um, from left and right or um, differences in the amount of breast tissue that's been imaged compared to the older studies. If there are any additional views, they show on my list here, so I'll know to look at them later. I next bring up the current MLO synthetic view, and I'm going to use that law mowing approach, starting from the top and the bottom, going through the right MLO, then the left MLO. Then I'm going to compare my zones, right top third, middle third, and bottom third, right to left. I'm then going to look for any, um, and I'm looking for masses, asymmetry, adenopathy, and skin. I'm not particularly looking for calcs on this view. I will also look at any additional views. And if I've thought there's a problem with quality control, this is a, the view that I'm going to measure the nipple to pectoral distance on and compare the two sides. And then I'll do the same on the CC view. Exactly the same on the current CC synthetic views, um, doing uh, lawn mowing, then comparing my zones looking for masses, asymmetries, adenopathy, and skin abnormalities, scrolling through any additional views. And again, I'm going to do that nipple to pectoral distance if I'm concerned that insufficient breast tissue has been used. I'll also notice if there's any evidence of blur on these images. I then bring up the full resolution right breast views in 2D with the CAD markers on initially, and then I turn them off after I've analyzed them. I look at the MLO, then I look at the CC, and I'm going to pan from the top to the bottom of the image. And in this view, I'm really focusing on calcifications or subtle architectural uh, areas of distortion. If I see any abnormalities, I'm going to magnify them. I'm going to analyze all the CAD markings. And then if there are additional views, I will also blow those up to full resolution and do the same thing with them. You must look at all views on full resolution. Starting with the right MLO, Cine view, um, Tomo view, Tomo images, and then the right CC, Tomo images. I'm going to either scroll or you can Cine back and forth. Um, and then again, I start and I do this in thirds, top, middle, and bottom. And this is particularly to look for areas of architectural distortion, analyze anything I saw on the prior 2D images, as well as um, looking for masses that you didn't identify previously. Compare the right MLO current and priors, oldest on top. And this is that real spot the difference view um, between these, particularly for asymmetries or masses. But obviously, any other abnormality I've detected previously, like calcifications or architectural distortion, I'm going to do the same. And exactly the same for the right CC view current compared to priors. We're then going to repeat exactly the same as I've done the sequence on the right breast with the left breast, starting with the full resolution with CAD. I'll just let you read through that to remind yourselves. 
going through both sets of Tomo images, scrolling back and forth several times. The left MLO current with the oldest old on top, scrolling through the others as necessary. And the left CC current with prior, with the oldest of the old on the top of the stack. We're now going to make our report, and then we're going to go ahead and repeat the whole system with the next mammogram. So by this point, I'm sure if you haven't thought this already, you're thinking it now, how long does this take? Well, for an experienced breast imager, it usually takes about two to five minutes per study if you have this a full set of 2D and um, tomographic images. So, you know, I'm, I'm at about the three minute mark. Um, if it's a complicated study, it may take me five. All right, to summarize, um, you really need to identify what workflow works for you, okay? You play with some different workflows, see what you like best, and then try and keep to that. It's going to make you much more sensitive and specific. You do need to have displays that have a screen that will review all of those different elements we're looking for optimally, masses, asymmetries, distortion, calcifications, and you must include um, full resolution views and then mag those as necessary. You need to include both 2D and 3D images if you have them available. And if you have both um, synthetic and digital, um, two digital 2Ds, I would recommend that you look at both um, and really start to set your mind for looking for the synthetic ones because, um, you know, I think with time, we're just going to have synthetic views. You want to compare them with at least two years ago if those are available and preferably longer. And there's some things you can really do to help your reading of screening mammograms. You know, that room needs to be quiet. You need to be undisturbed. Um, screening mammograms are much better batch read than read in the middle of you trying to do diagnostics and biopsies and running back and forth. Um, I personally always put headphones on. I put on a, a Spotify playlist and it really helps me focus. The lighting needs to be as low as it can be so you can still see any paperwork that you need to. You need to stay extremely focused, so turn off your phone and take breaks. And I would recommend you probably take breaks about every hour for five minutes, just sort of, you know, even if it's just checking your email or um, just standing up and stretching a little bit for a couple of minutes. And that's how you get into the Mamo Zen. Thank you very much for listening.